Hi. Oh. Uh, our, our welcome to my donut repair shop. Are you here for the donut repair club? Oh, well, you're just a little bit early. You see, I I'm pretty busy here inventing a special surprise for all the members in time for the next meeting. What do you mean you are inventing? It was my idea. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, young man. It was our idea. We were working on it together. Hmm, yeah. The handy dandy donut repair machine. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it is if it works. Oh, it'll work. It has to work, because, well, you know how I feel about empty donuts. Yeah. They remind me of how sad life is when we're empty without Jesus. Oh, but I think we're ready to start right now. All right. First, I take an empty donut. Yeah. You know, the sad kind that still has a hole in it, and I put it here. <laughs> and then... I take a sack of flour and I put it here. <laughs> and then I push this lever here. <laughs> Woo I'm not sure. No. What? The donut shrunk. <gasps> and it still has a hole in it. Oh, you did something wrong. We did something wrong. Huh? Oh, I know. Maybe if I adjust the donut, you later. Yeah. There we go. Be careful! More. It's still talking! And I turn this lever here and... Ah! What happened? Oh. 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 oh, it looks like it fixed you. Well, back to the old drawing board. Yeah. Uh, Hey, don't be too sad. You didn't really need that contraption anyway. Oh, yeah. Hey, you got lots of friends who are only too glad to help you fix donuts. That's true. Yeah. Besides, this old machine can't help you tell Bible stories like the kids no, can. That's true. I think you ought to call a donut repair club meeting right away. <laughs> It'll cheer you up. Yeah. And what's our next meeting supposed to be about? Well, uh, let's see now. Um, it's all about how Jesus helps us share God's love. <laughs> I think we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be talking about the book of Acts in the Bible. It's a story of, all about what happened after Jesus rose up from the dead. It's very exciting. Well, that's where we stopped after the last meeting. That's right, Duncan. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm going to call a meeting right now. I want to know what those kids have been doing since then. What have they done with all of that good news? Hey, I, I think I hear some music. Do you, do you hear something? I hear singing. This sounds like it's coming from outside. I think you're right. Extra, extra, read all about it. There's good news. Extra, extra, read all about it. There's good news. Extra, extra, read all about it. There's good news. Extra, extra. Love. 
my machine. Yeah. Our machine. <laughs> oh, well, it still doesn't work. Aww. But actually, that's good news because that means I still need you guys to help me tell Bible stories and fix donuts. Yay! <laughs> and this, why, this is even better news. You have been telling others. I'd been praying since the last meeting that you'd be sharing about Jesus, but this, why, this is frankly, this is, why, this is great. <laughs> sharing about Jesus hasn't been so easy for me. Well, what happened? The kids at school made fun of me. They called me church lady. Aren't you special? They're pretty mean. Yeah. Well, wow. Uh, it's a good thing you came back today because we're going to be talking about what Jesus' friends did after he rose up from the, from the dead. He didn't leave them all alone, you know. Well, what did happen? What do you mean he didn't leave them all alone? Yeah, what did Jesus do? I think he just went to live in heaven. No, he lives in my heart. He's in heaven. Heaven! Heart! Shh, wait, wait. Jesus is in heaven. See? Yeah, see? And he lives in our heart. See? Yeah, see? I think he went to heaven and sent his spirit back to us. There you go. That's good, Jess. Hey, why don't you all get ready to help me tell the story of the day of Pentecost? That's the day the Holy Spirit came down to live in the hearts of everybody who loved Jesus. It was very, very... Exciting? Well, yes. And no, because, well, they had to wait. Wait? Well, yeah, they, they had to wait for the Lord to send his spirit. Well, I don't like waiting for anything. They had to wait for the Lord to send. His spirit, they had to wait for the Lord to send. His spirit, they had to wait, they had to wait. Then the spirit blew in like the wind, and little tongues of fire came dancing upon them. But first they had to wait for the Lord. To send his spirit, they had to wait for the light. To send his spirit, they had to wait, they had to wait. Then joyfully, joyfully, they ran to tell the news. Joyfully, joyfully, Christ can live in you. But first they had to wait. For the Lord to send his spirit, they had to wait. For the Lord to send his spirit, they had to wait. They had to wait. They were laughing and leaping, praying and weeping. They were caring and sharing the awesome love of God. are worth waiting for. Huh. I should say so. Why, their lives were changed. They, they didn't want to be selfish anymore. They shared with one another, and, and they worshiped Jesus all the more, because now he was living in their heart. God's love fills us up and helps us share. Yeah. <laughs> Does it make us holy? Get it? Holy? <laughs> I'm sure they shared their toys. <laughs> I'm sure they shared whatever they had.
share with me and I share too. And his love goes around and round and round. His love goes around and around. I love mom and I love dad. Helping people makes God glad. And his love goes around and round and round. His love goes around and around. You can have my sandwich and my shirt. And I have a band-aid if you're hurt. What's mine is yours, what's yours is mine. And you can ask me anytime. Now it's time for us to go. Let's find out. Yeah. Salt. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Uh, I was reading ahead to the next story in the book of Acts. It's very, very scary. Oh, no, it's exciting. I, I was trying to sound like Jesus might have sounded when he was talking to Saul on the road. You see, Saul was this guy who wasn't too happy with all these new Christians running around filled with love and with the Holy Spirit. So. He tried to look for ways to hurt him and throw him in jail. He, yeah, can I see that? Yeah, sure. Saul was on his way to Damascus to arrest even more Christians when he was stopped in the road by a voice. Right. As a heavenly light flashed all around him, Jesus spoke to him. Hey, let's do this story, want to? Yeah! yeah. 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 Hey, Dan, you be Saul, all right? Sure. Go ahead. Go hey, ahead, Jeff. Here we go. Saul was blinded by a heavenly light and was taken to a house where he prayed and didn't eat for three days. Mm -hmm. That was until Jesus sent a man named Ananias to come pray with him. Right. I bet Ananias was scared because he knew what Saul had been doing to the Christians. <laughs> I bet no! He must. Jesus told him to go. That's true. Yeah, but I bet he was still afraid. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be Ananias. No, I wouldn't. No, Who no, wants no, to be Ananias? No way. No, no. no. Well, I guess I'll have to be <laughs> Ananias. You got the call. Here you go. All right, Ananias. All right, you got the job. Ananias, now don't be late. Go down to the street, name straight. There's a man who lies in wait, who's blind and cannot see. Ananias, now don't you be afraid of this old enemy. This man who hated me is praying now to see. Because I told him, so, 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 why do you hurt me? So, 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 why do you hurt me? So, 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 why do you hurt me? Why do you hurt me, so? So, 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 why do you hurt me? So, 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 why do you hurt me? So, 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 why do you hurt me? Why do you hurt me, so? Ananias, go right away. He's not had food for many a day. His appetite was chased away when blinded by my light. Ananias, just pray that he will open up his eyes and see a servant I've called him to be, to tell the world of me. And I will tell him, so, 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 now you will serve me, so, 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 now you will serve me. Serve me, so, 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 now you will serve me. 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 So, so,
now you will serve me now you will serve me so 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 now you will serve me so 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 now you will serve me so 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 now you will serve me now you will serve me so and a nice now don't be late go down to the street name straight there's a man who lies in wait who's praying now to see When God saved Saul, he forgave him and he filled him with the Holy Spirit. When God calls us, he loves to fill us with his love. I wish he'd fill those kids at school with his love. What's that? Did Saul see again? Yeah, were his eyes glazed, get it? <laughs> glazed. Did he need glasses? Did they have glasses back then? Well, I don't know about Saul, but I do know his enemies did not need glasses to find him. You see, when Paul started teaching... I his name was Saul. Well, he used to be called Saul, but when he became a Christian, they called him Paul, but his enemies wanted him to be called dead. Well, well, what was he doing that got him in so much trouble? Well, you tell me, can you guess? Stealing? No, no, it wasn't for stealing. You see, Paul started telling everybody about Jesus, and this made him enemies with all of his old friends and everyone who didn't believe in Jesus. They were looking for ways to kill him. So, all of his new friends waited until dark, put him in a basket, and took him up high on the city wall, and they lowered him out a window and down to the ground so he could get away. Could we do that, please? Do you want to? Yeah! <laughs> all right. Preaching at night, preaching about Jesus in the broad daylight. Paul's making enemies by what he said. Paul's making enemies who want him dead. So here comes down Paul in a basket. Paul in a basket, lowered him down. Here comes down Paul in a basket. Paul in a basket, lowered him down. They want to kill him because they heard Paul was teaching Jesus' word. Some boys are calling me names, and it hurt my feelings. That happened to me, too. It did? Why, this is terrible. What, what has gotten into you? you? You're acting just like the world. This person fights this person. This country hates this country. Now, what are we going to do about it? Maybe they're getting hungry. My mommy says we get cranky when we're hungry. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, but... That is no excuse for this unloving behavior. Now go ahead and apologize. Sorry. Sorry. That's better, I guess. Now come on, let's ask God to help us get along. Let's pray. Come on. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd help us to care for one another and forgive each other and get along together and... Hey. <laughs> Amen. I, I just had a thought. Mary, maybe eating wasn't such a bad idea after all. Because there's a story here in the book of Acts about one of Jesus' friends, Peter. Now, he had been taught as a child to stay away from anyone who wasn't like him, a Jew, and to never, ever eat food that wasn't Jewish. 
Now, at one time, God had a very good reason for that, but God changed all of that when he sent Jesus to everybody. I didn't know he died for everybody in the whole world. Yeah, I never knew he died for us just so we could get along with <laughs> each other. There you go. That's better. Now, listen to the rest of the story. One day, Jesus spoke to Peter in a dream, and he told him that he could eat any kind of food with any kind of person in the whole world. <laughs> and that very day, Peter went to visit Cornelius, a Roman soldier, and he told him all about Jesus. <laughs> I guess that means if we can all eat together, we could all get along together.
have no home, home, home. I have no home, home, home. I have no home, home. So much. Can't we help? We should share. Well, that's what the Christians in Antioch did when the prophet Agabus told them there would be a terrible famine throughout the world. Why? They sent food to the hungry Christians in Judea. But they knew they weren't just hungry for food, but they were also hungry for the Word of God. So they sent the first missionaries in the name of Jesus. What's a missionary? A missionary is a person who tells others about Jesus. Well, if that's what a missionary does, that's what I want to do. I want to tell people about Jesus. Send me! I want to go. Me too. Me too. Well, somebody should do something. <laughs> well, then what we really need is someone to uh, clean the tables and bring some more food. Clean? Bring food? Couldn't we just pray for them? tells every boy and girl to take his word throughout the world cause we're boys and girls on a mission to the world boys and girls on a mission to the world boys and girls on a mission boys and girls on a mission we're boys and girls on a mission to You looked great. You did a great job. Good for you. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm thirsty. Well, look at me. I ruined my blouse and I cut my finger. At least you tried. Being a missionary is hard work. <laughs> it's not only hard work, but it can be real dangerous, too. Anybody here want to help me tell the next story? You can do it. No, it's OK. You can do it. Wow. What has gotten into you? Your attitude's really gotten better. It's God's love. Jesus is in our heart. All right. We're what? trying to share. Listen, that makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? 
God's love really is at work here. Good. Well, let's see now. I'm going to need some more help. Uh, let's see now. Um, I need uh, Brian and Dan and Ryan and uh, Annie, Brianna, Julie, and Mary and Nikki. Why don't you get ready for the next story? Go ahead. <laughs> there you go. Good. Now, when Paul and Silas went on their missionary journey to Philippi, they got in bad trouble for doing a good thing. They got thrown in jail for saving a slave girl from an evil spirit of fortune telling. Her masters were mad because they couldn't make money off her anymore. And they had Paul and Silas whipped and beaten and chained deep down in a dungeon. You'd think they'd be all sad and depressed, but they weren't. Instead of complaining, they prayed and praised God, even though they were in prison, and God did something spectacular. <laughs> I wonder if they ever imagined God would send an earthquake to the rescue. It's an earthquake. The jail is a rockin'. It's an earthquake. The jail is a rollin'. It's an earthquake. The doors are poppin' tonight. Paul and Silas were chained in jail. The blood was on their back. Their songs and hymns and praises to God sent angels to the attack. And it's an earthquake. The jail is a rockin'. It's an earthquake. The jail is a rollin'. It's an earthquake. The doors are poppin' tonight. Dear Mr. Jailer, don't kill yourself. We are all still here. The Lord we serve has opened the doors. It is he whom you should fear. It's an earthquake. The jail is a rockin'. It's an earthquake. The jail is a rollin'. It's an earthquake. The doors are poppin' tonight. Paul and Silas said to the man as he knelt on bended knee. Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved, you and all your family. It's an earthquake, the jail is a rockin', it's an earthquake. The jail is a rollin', it's an earthquake. The doors are poppin' tonight. It's an earthquake, the jail is a rockin', it's an earthquake. The jail is a rollin'. The doors are popping tonight. Good job. Good job. You guys were great. Now, what did you learn, huh? What'd you learn on that one? God huh? gives courage. Amen. God helps us give thanks. He sure does. You did a good job. Hey, you know, that night, God chose that a jail should be open. But there were other jails for Paul that did not open. You see, Paul spent his last days on earth in a jail with a pen and paper writing to Christians letters that are now in our Bible, encouraging them to carry on the good work, to carry on the good news, to keep on telling others about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though I am in chains for the gospel, the gospel is not in chains. Though soldiers guard me with their swords, they can't stand in God's way the message of Jesus shall go out. Yes, the message of Jesus shall go out if i live on in my body i shall live in jesus name if i die now don't you cry for heaven i shall gain 
in the message of Jesus shall go out. Yes, the message of Jesus shall go out. The message of Jesus shall go out. Oh, oh, oh. the message of Jesus shall go out. Mm-hmm. The message of Jesus shall go out. The gates of hell shall not prevail. God's word shall go forth with a shout. The message of Jesus shall go out. Mm. The message of Jesus shall go out. Even though I'm in jail, God's word won't fail. In these letters sent over the sea Yes, God has used me And how much more He could use you Who are free The message of Jesus Shall go out Yes, the message of Jesus Shall go out before you go, I'm going to make sure that you are properly equipped to share God's Word with others. So, I've got a present, a Bible for each one of you. Yay! (laughs) For Duncan, too? For Duncan, too. Thank you. Wait, what's wrong, Sarah? I don't know. I guess I'm still thinking about Paul and Silas. When I saw them, after they were whipped and put in jail, They still wanted to thank God and tell others about Jesus. I realized they've got something I haven't got. Courage and love and... You want to pray? Yeah. Let's pray with Sarah. Lord, help me to share your love with others. Help me to be a helpful, giving person like Paul and Silas. Help me to be brave and loving. In Jesus' name, amen. Now. Don't forget, God wants to use all of us to take the message of his love into the whole world. Now, come on, get your Bible. There we go. All right, goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. And don't forget to come back. Goodbye. 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 Goodb